NASA scientists last week reportedly received evidence from the Curiosity rover of a surprisingly high level of methane on the red planet Mars, possibly a sign of life. Yet another reason why so many Earthlings are dreaming of traveling to Mars and seeing red for themselves. Our cover story is reported by David Pogue. We've always been intrigued by Mars. We've composed music about it. We've made paintings of it. And we've made so many movies about it. Yes! Yes! But what no person has ever done before is go there. Mars in the public zeitgeist is very hot right now. We're closer to putting footprints on the surface of Mars today than we've ever been in the past. Adam Stelzner is the chief engineer for a new unmanned NASA mission to Mars launching next year called Mars 2020. So Mars is smaller than Earth. It's colder. It has a very thin atmosphere, so you couldn't breathe it. And so it's a very inhospitable environment. Of course, this isn't NASA's first mission to Mars. We put the Viking lander on Mars in 1976, the Sojourner rover in 1997, twin rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, in 2003, and in 2012, Adam Stelzner's last big project, the Curiosity rover. It's still exploring Mars today. Curiosity told us that the ancient, wet environment of Mars was, in fact, habitable for life. Still the question hangs tantalizingly unanswered in front of us if it was alive. And um, our mission, Mars 2020, is sort of here to hopefully untangle that question and provide an answer. The star of Mars 2020 is this rover. Its cameras, lasers, and sensors will analyze the surface of Mars, looking for signs of ancient life. And it will put rock samples into airtight canisters for a later mission to bring back to Earth. This rover will also be carrying a stowaway, a fellow robot that will detach once the rover is safely on Mars. The mid part is the rotor system with a pair of counter-rotating blades. That's right. NASA has built a Mars helicopter. NASA's Mimi so Ong. This particular helicopter is uh, designed now to fly up to 90 seconds. And um, 90 seconds? $23 million for a drone that can fly 90 seconds. It doesn't sound like very much. Look, it this is the first time ever that we're flying uh, in an, on another planet. Meanwhile, at NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C., plans are afoot to send an even more delicate cargo to Mars. Has NASA thought about a, an overall timeline of putting a man on Mars, a person on Mars? We're, we're thinking um, maybe the, the, the mid-2030s uh, as, as a timeline, just visionary. Jim Bridenstine is the NASA administrator, the top dog. A key element of his Mars plan is creating a sort of rehearsal stage on the moon. The moon can be a great proving ground for our first mission to Mars. If something doesn't go right, there's still an opportunity to get home. Is part of the Mars push to literally create a, a planet B you know, uh -huh. is, are, are people thinking that science fiction-y? I'm not ruling it out, but it's not my objective right now. So the main objective is... We want to discover life. But not everyone thinks that way. Some people argue that we need another option in case we make the Earth uninhabitable. You want a backup planet. You want a backup strategy. Maybe a couple of backup strategies. The moon could be one. Mars could be one. Gwyn Shotwell is the president and chief operating officer of SpaceX whose business is launching cargo, satellites, and soon people into space for its customers, governments, communications companies, and NASA. Her boss is Tesla billionaire Elon Musk. So it's important that we try to become a multi-planet civilization, extend life beyond Earth. Unlike NASA, SpaceX reuses its rockets instead of just letting them burn up. It's astonishing to see them return to the pad and land perfectly on their tails, by themselves. 
Still, SpaceX and NASA need each other. I want to be clear, we are working with NASA. So you're not competitors? Not competitors to NASA, no. Oh, They're wow. a customer as well as a partner. But Chatwell does think that SpaceX will put people on Mars first. We would love to be in a position to send a ship to Mars in 2022. Hopefully, if we did a good job in 2022, we would be able to send people in 2024. 2024 with people? Do people say you're, qu you're crazy? People have said we are crazy since we started. <laughs> This is the enormous rocket that SpaceX is building for Mars. It's called the Super Heavy. It's not quite as big as the Saturn booster, the biggest of all time, but SpaceX says it's six times as powerful. So why Mars now? The characteristics of the planet were close enough to Earth that we could see a path to putting humans on Mars and having them survive. But it is a fixer upper planet. Life is not going to be easy on Mars for the first few decades, for sure. We're in the middle of a lava flow, and this is the high seas habitat behind us, Hawaii Space Exploration Analog and Simulation. Kim Binstead is a professor at the University of Hawaii and the mastermind behind this isolated habitat perched on the side of a Hawaiian volcano. It feels as much like Mars as you can find on Earth. So this gives us a chance to run long duration simulations of exploring the surface of Mars. So by long duration, I mean four to 12 months or even longer. You mean people live in that dome for a year? A year, yeah. Wow, and can yeah. they call home? Nope, they are under a 20 minute each way communications delay. So that's to simulate the amount of time it takes for a signal to get from Earth to Mars. Uh, so that means no web surfing, no social media, no picking up the phone and calling anyone. Um, can I try it on? Yeah, sure. Do you have it in a... 40 long. The high seas habitat can't simulate the hostile conditions on Mars, but it can simulate being cooped up with fellow astronauts during a months long mission. The main thing we're testing are the people. If the human part fails, it's just as catastrophic as if the rocket blows up. Binstead says that the key is choosing the right kind of people. It can be summarized as a thick skin, a long fuse, and an optimistic outlook. If you took people off the street and put them in this habitat, they would probably be at each other's throats within a day or two. Probably because inside, uh, it feels like a one and a half story uh, camping tent. So this is a bedroom. As you can see, it's not very big. No. Uh, but you do have a bed. It's about uh, what you'd get on a cheap cruise ship. Very cheap or a prison ship. sentence. <laughs> if you can imagine going on a family holiday in a camper van for a year, and uh, this, is, this is kind of the situation we're talking about here, and our crews have all emerged alive. <laughs> now, space travel is massively expensive. So I had to ask NASA head Jim Bridenstine the big taxpayer question. Uh, why should we spend money on going to other planets when we have so many problems here at home? Uh, I think that's a very short-sighted um, suggestion, and I'll tell you why. Um, space has transformed all of our lives. The way we communicate, the way we navigate, produce food, produce energy, the way we predict weather, the way we do disaster relief, provide national security and defense. And the only reason that all of these technologies are available to us that is because of the trail that NASA has blazed doing exploration. Plus Tang. <laughs> Plus Tang, sure. <laughs> Tang, chosen for the Gemini astronauts. Have a blast. Have some Tang. So here's where we stand. NASA is completing construction of its new Mars rover in readiness for its launch in July 2020. In Texas, SpaceX is firing prototypes of its Mars rocket engines twice a week getting ready for short test flights in late 2020. I think we'll get to Mars. I think we'll do it within the next decade, for sure. And NASA's Adam Stelzner is looking forward to watching his baby lift off to Mars from a distance. Would you ever want to go to Mars? No. <laughs> Why not? I have children and a beautiful garden, and this is a warm, wet kiss compared to the surface of Mars. I'd like to just hang out here.